Hey, what's up? Sean here, co-founder of Think International and creator of YouTube for Churches. And today, I just want to talk about the 12 ways to use YouTube for your church. Now, just a little backstory is YouTube for Churches came out of my personal experience of since 2005 being on staff doing church media at two different churches of different sizes of working with a lot of different churches and ministries and helping them achieve better results online that help potential guests discover them locally, as well as just extending the reach of their message uh, regionally or even worldwide on their content that they're creating and putting out. And then in 2010, uh, I launched Think International with Jeff Moores, which quickly became the number one channel on YouTube for Christian leadership and creative content and church media. And we've seen our videos be viewed nearly half a million times now, and they just continue to grow, as well as we've seen a lot of popular search terms and keywords. Uh, we've dominated those, getting just the top results for terms like creative leadership or church leadership uh, or church media, church video announcements, all those kinds of terms that are being searched on YouTube. So. Uh, YouTube for Churches just really came out of my personal experience and my just being in the trenches really working with YouTube and creating a ton of vi different video content in different scenarios and settings. So with that, 12 ways to use YouTube for your church are just some ideas to think about, wow, YouTube, the second largest search engine on the internet, the uh, third most visited website on the internet and uh, just an incredible growth of online video is something that really, if you're not using, you, could, uh, you should be for your church ministry, um, or uh, if you are using, maybe even some ways to use it better and some ideas that you haven't thought of. So let's jump into the 12 ways to use YouTube for your church. Number one, might be kind of obvious, is messages. A lot of people will take right now and they'll put their messages on YouTube, their week, weekend messages, their weekend sermons. And the great thing about YouTube is it's free. And after you use it for a while and you, you're on your channel, they're actually al allowing full length messages to be uploaded, long videos. You know, they could be 40 minutes or so and, uh, or 30, 40, however long your messages are. And 1080p, full HD resolution, free and you can upload as many as you want. So it's a great asset to upload messages and, and categorize those and put those out on your YouTube channel. But secondly, you could upload message snippets. And honestly, YouTube is not a lot of people are necessarily watching long content, 30 minutes, 40. There are those instances they, that they are, but a lot of successful churches that are kind of just getting their message out are putting it into snippets, realizing just one point from the message, just you know one illustration or one complete thought that maybe links to the longer message but can kind of draw them in. It gives you the ability to target on maybe a provocative headline, uh, a title of the video, and not just you know Romans 12 study, just something broad that you know someone's not going to click on, but uh, you know even something that could kind of stir up controversy so that people click on it. And then they want to see more, you know, um, message snippets would be one. Now, another would be video announcements, event recaps, or event promos. Another great thing that you could start uploading on YouTube is maybe you're already creating video announcements for your church. You could upload them weekly and you could continually put niche keyword terms and search terms on your video announcements to reach out locally. You could title your video announcements, your, your city name, your church name, and, and then they could share. And so not only are you gonna be able to get your video announcements out to your church, and any of this content, of course, could be embedded on your website, put in playlists, and uh, you could have just a video announcement playlist on your website just for your church to get them information, but it could even be discovered depending on how you title your video announcements and what kind of tags you use. And another one would be event promos. Maybe you wanna put a conference promo out, or you want to uh, put an event promo, a big outreach event that you're doing upload that event promo to YouTube and, uh, and then you could share it on social media and share it on Facebook and share it on Twitter and, and educate your community about events that are happening. And another one that's great is event recaps is, you know, an event happens at your church and then just shoot a recap video and put it together. And a great thing about a recap video is it can always promote the next year's event. So maybe you send an email out to your list and you say, hey, check out, you know, this short video from last year's event. It's a great way, great thing to upload 
on your YouTube channel. Number four, stories and testimonies. Great way to use YouTube for your church is to upload stories and testimonies, real life stuff that's happening in the lives of uh, people in your church. So whether, you know, a quick story of how a message affected them or something they've seen happen in their life, you can shoot that in. And one of the things you might be thinking is, well, you know, this is a lot of content create. In YouTube for Churches, we talk about, you know, tips of how to easily create these kinds of things. It doesn't have to be a huge production, you know, maybe just even carry around a camera on the weekend and pull somebody aside and they could share a quick testimony, a quick story. It doesn't have to be ultra complex and you could up that, upload that onto your YouTube channel to get out. Really, if you think about it, even in, in the business world or in the product world, today everybody is looking for reviews. Whenever I go on Amazon.com, I'm always looking for how many stars and I'm reading reviews because I want to know, is this book good? Is this product good? And so it's very important that you get out stories and testimonies in today's world of what is happening at your church. You know, real life stories that aren't from the pastor and are not from the staff, but are from the people that attend that really endorse and say, you know, this, this, is, a, this is a cool place. God's doing something here. There's, you know, uh, this is something to check out. And it comes from, you know, real people with stories and testimonies. Number five, video tours. Video tours uh, are, are great ideas. One, imagine if you shot a video that just gave a tour of what somebody, somebody could expect on the weekend at your church. Literally from the parking lot all the way up to the seats and that walks them through, walks them through the lobby, gives them kind of a, an experience to, to take out some of the nervousness that would come with checking out at a new church. You know, you could just literally walk and shoot it as a video blog and just say, hey, here we are, friendly greeters. Here's the lobby. This is where the restrooms are. And someone can literally check out your church before they ever, you know, leave the safety of their own home to go into the uncharted waters of checking out a new church. Shoot a quick video tour. You know, you, you could do it really nice and it could be kind of overproduced or you could just shoot it simple and just, you know, give it literally a reality TV show kind of a feel like just a, a chill like not overproduced is almost better because now people are able to experience your, uh, your church, you know, in a safe way to check it out before they go check it out live. And another video tour that you could do, and, and many churches do this, is uh, building programs. You can always, you know, keep your church updated on what is happening at uh, a new location, a new facility, a new building. And you could, uh, you know, if you're doing a stewardship campaign or something, shoot a video tour to always just keep them updated. Again, it doesn't have to be overproduced. Just shot on your phone, your iPhone, your Droid, or just on a small vlog camera video tours. Number six, online only, only teaching or training. You know, in some cases you, you upload messages or message snippets that are, you know, shared on the weekends, but you also could literally sit down as what would be called a talking head and just share a teaching or training. You're the lead pastor and you just kind of want to do a weekly discipleship message or a short snippet message. Um, you could just upload that directly and it could just be an encounter with you face to face kind of one on one where each week you just do a couple minutes or longer online only that's only accessible on your YouTube channel. Uh, number seven, video blogs or uh, teaching that could be teaching style or lifestyle teaching. You know, Today, it's not really just about you know, what happens on stage and just the message, but there's something about people are really you know, longing for reality, they're longing for lifestyle, they're longing for really behind the scenes, and are people real? You know, do they have you know, just kind of a real life? So video blogs are an awesome way to, to either one, do teaching, again, maybe in a different, uh, different setting where you go to a physical place to give like an illustration, you know, by being there, you go to a river and talk about a river and you do kind of like a teaching like this or lifestyle. You know, today people are looking for reality. They're looking for uh, off the stage, They're looking for behind the scenes. They're looking for a personal encounter with you, not just kind of being spoken down to, but also having like the community thing. So lifestyle is an awesome opportunity to maybe just shoot some video blogs of behind the scenes of, of your life, of church staff, of the lead pastor, of, of an event, you know, behind the scenes during a conference, just in the hallways, just in the lobby, just in other places. You could shoot video blogs and lifestyle. Now you might be thinking, with seeing all these 
you know, wow, th this is a lot for just using, you know, my one YouTube channel for your church. And one of the things we talk about in YouTube for churches is the strategy of, of having maybe different channels and how do you really keep your content organized so it makes sense, using playlists to put it in various places on your website, on various channels, and, uh, and potentially creating a separate channel because the people that are interested in your messages might not be interested in your video blogs and so you might want to separate that out to a different channel. But we go into more of that in YouTube for Churches. Let's look at number eight. Music or creative content. Huge on, of course, the internet and you love music, we love music, praise songs, worship songs, and so music content gets so many views. A great way to use YouTube for your church is to put out song specials that you do, put out music that you do, whether you capture it on the weekend or maybe you create it specifically, like you shoot a music video, you get a team together and get some interns, some volunteers, or somebody creative and create a music video that you show, but you can also share that on YouTube. And then, of course, creative content, which really sky's the limit. I mean, mixed media, whether it's an Easter production with sound, light, video, and different stuff happening, or just creative content in general, you know, outside of the box type of stuff that is, is creative, spoken word pieces, or, or a, a hip hop video, or you know, a story video, a short video, all the maybe creative content you are creating that you're already using, use it on YouTube, tag it right so that it can be found and it can be searched um, or, and, you know, and publish it or create it simply for YouTube to get a message out to your email list, to social media about your church, some kind of a story, short film, documentary type of a thing, whatever it is. Here we go, number nine. Training content for your team. You know, what's so great is YouTube allows you to make videos unlisted or even private and you could just shoot some content that's maybe just in-house and it again doesn't have to be hard. You literally could just turn on your phone and say, hey, here's how everything that needs to be turned on on the weekend and you just walk around and you film all the power switches and you film the different things and, and the checklist to turn off and literally you could shoot training content and then just share that privately. You know, it's not something that the public would necessarily be interested in but you just shoot that training content of how to do that, upload it unlisted and then just email it to a few team members or send them a text message link and they could just open it on their smartphone, whatever it is. Training content for your team. Let's look at number 10. Another way to use YouTube for your church would be to do interviews, whether even on Skype or live. Now, interviews are so great because if you think about it, you've got staff members coming through your church that people could know or have wisdom to share. You've got uh, guest speakers maybe that come from your denomination, your network. Um, you do a conference and you have an opportunity to have these interviews and you could literally shoot short or long live interviews, backstage, front stage, lobby interviews, man on the street microphone interviews and put out content from your church of some of these voices that are coming in to your church. And another thing that's so great is Skype interviews. You could shoot literally an interview over Skype and we've done it, I've done it personally many times and uh, someone just literally, two faces are recorded with some software, uh, with software that I use is VODBurner. I'll put a link in the description below but you know, interviews are a great way to kind of extend the reach and maybe somebody knows the person that's being interviewed but they've never heard about what you're doing. Now there's kind of a connection made and kind of a bridge made there and so interviews are a great way to use YouTube for your church. Let's check out number 11. Road travel updates. Use YouTube, shoot videos to give updates from the road, give updates from mission field, from travels and uh, nowadays whether it's, uh, and you could have an iPod touch or uh, an iPhone, you literally could edit quick videos just on iMovie on your phone or just take a laptop and upload it from Starbucks wherever you are and literally just give quick updates from the road, give travel updates and uh, mission field updates and just the status of how things are going. Things with technology, these things are becoming much more of a reality and, uh, and something to check out. So definitely road and travel updates and you know lastly number 12, innovate. And uh, yeah, it's kind of a sneaky one with the question mark because ultimately the sky's the limit for possibilities of how you could get your message out and reach more people using YouTube. And an example is a very controversial video but well-known video 
called Why I Hate Religion But Love Jesus. I think last time I checked it had near 22 million views and it's a spoken word piece and uh, no doubt about it, that video has been spread and the message has gotten out and it was an outside of the box type of a video. So one of the things that we go into in YouTube for, uh, for Churches, the course, is when you begin to th learn the strategy and think about keywords and think about ways to how things are searched and you begin to kind of get into the inner workings of those types of things, ideas begin to spark and pop with, you know, how could you innovate to do something really creative, something really new that isn't necessarily just informational like a tour of your church, but something that you create and you publish and you get out there that can just reach people or, uh, you know, just, ex just really share the gospel in creative ways. So anyways, 12 ways to use YouTube for your church with really unlimited possibilities as that 12th one. I hope these have been a blessing to you. And if you're interested in YouTube for Churches, the course is currently under development, but make sure to go to youtubeforchurches.com, enter your name and email address, and I'll be sending out just information and free content. And then eventually once it's released, you'll have access to that as well. So thank you so much for checking this video out and we'll talk soon.